Welcome guys to another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. Uh, so this evening, joining us on the show, we have, as always, Higher Level Head Coach James Doolan. And our special guest coming on the show tonight, we have KSW champion Norman Park. Thanks for your time, Norman, and getting on. No problem, mate. Cheers. <laughs> and we have Next Gen- Generation Northern Ireland Head Coach, Roddy Moore. Thanks for coming on, Roddy. Hello, thanks for having us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've, uh, we've obviously been chatting a wee bit off camera um, about the current situation and how everybody's, how everybody's getting on with things. Norman, uh, you're out in Poland at the moment? I've been here for a couple of weeks, mate. Um, uh, I didn't really want to come, but uh, I was kind of forced in a way. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, want, I, want, I, I wanted to stay back home and train for this fight, given the circumstances where this boy used to train at. You know, Gambit used to train here, so uh, um, I think it kind of hypes up a wee bit more and throws a dig at him. But I've been here for uh, uh, just over two weeks, and uh, I'm not, I'm not going to stay the full time. I was planning to stay till the fight, but I'm going to come home and finish off with, uh, finish training with Rodney for the last three weeks, and then we're going to head over there fight week, maybe a few days before the fight, and then just, uh, like always, just go and uh, rip shit up and get the job done. Uh, Two one army. (laughs) Yeah, always. Hey, James. Hey, mate. mate. (laughs) (laughs) What's it it like? Two James. Two James. (laughs) (laughs) What's it like out there in terms of, we hear uh, things are relaxing a wee bit in the UK, they seem to be moving a wee bit, things are moving along, but... What's the situation in, in, in Poland like in terms of your training and social distancing and, and all that? Oh, stuff? there's definitely, I think, uh, I had a friend back home, uh, Logie. <laughs> You'll know Logie, Rodney. Uh, he, uh, uh, he sent me the steps. You know, Poland's about three steps ahead or something in the UK and Ireland. So uh, everybody's back to everything here. Work, uh, restaurants are open, health suites are open. The gym's just open to the public there. I think it was the other day, uh, a few days ago. So, um it's basically all, uh, they still get their social distancing and stuff like that there. And some people wear their masks and stuff, but I didn't wear a mask on out of bollocks, you know, I think, you know, they blew out proportion. Hey, they exactly. Ah, they, blew out, they blew out of proportion a bit too much, I think. And, uh, Aye. But, I mean, a lot of people's going to listen to what they say. So, uh, but I think I think you can see back home, everything's starting to ease up back home. And uh, the retail shops are starting to open too. And uh, I think what there's a scene on that, page back home the north coast page there was no new cases of the coronavirus so uh <laughs> i kind of just laughed at it and just thought right i better not say too much because i'll get a lot of enemies here <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, a bit of controversy i but you know i see they're just uh, a couple of weeks i think it'll just be the exact same as it is here everything will be opened up gyms opened and i'm sure everybody wants to get back to the gym too because um uh, i don't know like rodney them boys have been doing a wee bit of training i'm not too sure but um I know when I get back, we're going to be training for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I know we're going to do a wee bit of pizzas there, some is. Uh, and, say too much now. <laughs> Secret and, fight club. <laughs> and for you, Rodney, obviously, Norman coming back over, do, do you, are you going to pre-plan some training? How, how are you going to work it when he gets back into, back into Northern Ireland? Aye. We'll just work out. We'll just sit down and whatever days he needs to train, whatever bodies he needs, we'll just we'll arrange it, you know. But I say there is a handful of guys I'm doing bits and pieces there. Uh, just keep it taking over just this last couple of weeks uh, just before Norman headed to Poland you know we kind of talked about doing doing something but again it's just like bag work and pad work and sprints and stuff so on the bike it kind of, <laughs> on the bike there's a lot of Lance Armstrongs about now <laughs> <laughs> well, you do get a bike in the country man Ross so <laughs> uh, I've saw that people are looking for bikes and I don't think you can pick up a bike bikes and weights you can get weights anywhere man there's no weights no bikes uh, and then a friend of mine owns a motorbike shop and they're going like crazy too man he's oh. blessing in disguise for him and oh, I don't know if you've seen it here that bikes are not short short, uh, short of supply that somebody tried to take Stevie Ray's neighbours didn't they James I've seen that. I've seen that. Crazy. No way, boy. Aye, that's probably no the sight you want to see when you steal a couple of bikes and turn around and steal no. your spine, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, no, uh, with, with this fight coming up as well, Norman, obviously, uh, Gamrot, an opponent uh, you're familiar with, this will be the the, the third fight Earth. against him. Uh, so, in terms of... You, 
Are you looking forward to this more? Because there seems to be a wee bit of, wee bit of niggle between you both. Well, it was the second fight. There was more tension in the second fight, and uh, it was more like a, it was just a hot-headed fight, to be honest. But it was good for the fans and the promotion. The promoters liked it too. But. This fight, um, I know they want me to say stuff and talk and say this and say that, but I want the guy just to give me a good, clean fight and then may the best man win. You know, if, uh, I feel like if the, if the lads can beat me fair and square, there's no problem. I'd shake a man's hand, no problem, but I just feel like I've been unjustly done by uh, the first fight. I felt it was a close fight, but in the contract that said if we feel the fight's close we'll make it go to a sudden death round which we could go to the fourth round so I was thinking in my head the whole time we're going to go to the fourth round here and this is where I feel like I got a bit of momentum going into this fourth round here and it was it was slowing down it was just my style my style against the style wasn't really too good it didn't really match up too well against them and uh, and then in the second fight I said to Rodney right, if he's going to stand and keep it on the feet because he'll not want to wrestle too much you know because um, it takes a lot out of you when you're trying to take someone down to get a good defence so um, we realised after the first right, right he's not going to take us down here we're just going to slug it out and that was it so I said let's turn it into a dog fight and just keep going and pressure and pressure and pressure and uh, and then you see their, their tactics starting to come in again but I've said my part and that's what I did and I'm not going to moan anymore about it so I think July the 11th it's a good day you know uh, <laughs> it's a good day to uh, go Shut and get the, the fuck all once and for all ah, yeah, just to go in there and just you know just Put the pressure on him. Stay heavy on the defense. You know, I'm sure he hasn't been out. He's been out for a couple of years now. I think he hasn't he fought for a couple of years. But he's um, he did the ADCC competition there and he got beat by Gary Tunin. So it was no shame in losing to somebody like that there. But um, I mean, he's obviously worked in his overall MMA game too. But uh, I, I think my style is just bad for him too. You know, and then I'm kind of not going to respect him too much. Just go in and just kind of let it go and when they pressure you know because I uh, when I was in UFC there was a wee bit of pressure there too and they never really like kind of fucking hit all cylinders in the fight and uh, then you look back on it and think oh what if I did this and did that and, but then again you're fighting tough competition too you know it's it's not just as easy as that there but um, I'm just expecting a good a good fight and it's going to be a wee bit weird too without the fans but uh, uh I'm not looking forward to it, you know. I'm just getting prepared for it, and uh, you would have uh, you would have had the fights in the Ultimate Fighter with the fans anyway. That's right, so, James. So I that'll, uh, that'll help. I experienced that before too, but so that's where it kind of helps a wee bit. Um, uh, but it's going to be it is going to be a bit weird walking out there, and you're not going to hear the crowd because it's good to hear the crowd. I like the feel of the crowd too, you know. Even if they boo or cheer for you, but I didn't really mind if they boo against you because it just at the end of the day it's just you and him fighting in there. But um, uh, I just want to see how he reacts to it, you know, because he's never felt you know fighting and just basically like a hard spar. <laughs> so we hear the, you hear the smacks and hear the punches and uh -huh. hear the corner shouting and all. Yeah, but, aye, that's what you'll hear. You'll hear <laughs> <I'll> definitely <laughs> hear Rodney. Like no problem. <laughs> Pure Ballymena accent. <laughs> you don't understand it. <laughs> you have no uh -huh. clue what's going on. Oh God, you wouldn't belong getting frostbutt. And these new new shocks that I got as well. You see, I had to turn the hill, the hill, just just up to me. What do we say? I had to turn the hill up, 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 up to my foot there, to just so the sock would go longer. The mother got these trainer shock things there. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I'll be talking to him during the fight too. I'm going to try and, like, uh, try and poke up a wee bit, you know, try and like, get him riled up. Because I'm not too sure what way the fight's going to go, but I got a feeling he's going to maybe try and come out and play a wee bit cautious and 
maybe strike a bit and then maybe at the end of each round try and get the takedown, you know, try and sneak a takedown to score the score the rounds or else he's trying to go out there for the quick submission or something because he's really good at heel hooks and uh, very good uh, when he's on top, but he needs to get you down first, you know, and he's striking game, like, I feel my striking's better than his, you know, I know he did a lot of damage in the second fight, but he's not really a hard puncher or anything like that there, he hit me on the same spot a few times, but I think it was just my will and determination, just keep pressure pressure on him because uh, the coaches where I'm training that here says he, he doesn't like that whenever you pressure him and you've got good defence. He always seems to get the boys to the ground and, and that's where he's, he's comfortable, you know. I think the other thing as well, that's something you said, he's not fought in quite a while and you've, you you have been fight, fighting and winning. So you're, you're on a is it fi- five fight win streak at the moment, obviously. Some really good wins in that time. All decisions. <laughs> hey, listen, it's, a win, it's, man. A, it's a win. Oh, I'd love a good finish in this one, I'll tell you that. I'd, I'd love to just pop the cherry, pop the cherry, and that's it. That's me ready to keep going. <laughs> but but, but confidence wise for you as well, obviously, you, you've coming off at it, uh, you've fought the, the Polish Zombie, you've now the KSW. Uh, W champion, so confidence must be high for you going into this as well. Well, I'm, I've been a bit more active, so uh, I think that's going to play into my favour a wee bit too. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on him because we believe, or we've been hearing too, that he's fell out with KSW for a while there and he's looking to go to the UFC. But um, uh, so that's the reason why he hasn't fought in a long time. But I, I can see his point. He wants to go to the UFC to test himself against, uh, you know, like the tougher people, you know. I see that, and where he's training an American top team, and they've been blowing smoke up his arse, saying that he's ah, oh, he's ready for the top ten, and blah blah blah. And I says, well, he needs to get by me first. So if he can get by me first, then fair play to him. But other than that, um, I just can't see it happening. But they've been asking me this question: Oh, are you trying to stop his dreamers from going to the UFC? And he kind of puts you in a bad position thinking about it because whenever I was up and coming that's where you wanted to be to the UFC mm-hmm. but I've been there and did that now so my my scenes in the KSW I like it here and uh, I just signed a new contract so I'm not I can't really disagree with what they're paying me good money now too and uh, you know they'll not hear me cry anymore getting <laughs> 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 them stuck all the time <laughs> it's not something we've spoke about as well um, we're going to going to the big teams like American top team it doesn't always benefit fighters we, it's something we've spoke about in the past James isn't it uh, it's just a cattle market there I think I think they just go there and there's, there's so many of them they're not really getting a lot of individual attention they're just another number in a big room I think um, I expect, I, I've noticed that today the people I know who's went and not, not a lot of people have had a lot of good things to say about it. Not just that, Jim, just some of these kind of super teams in general. I would agree with that too. I, mm. think, I think, you know, well, Tony Ferguson's a beast anyway, but Tony Ferguson doesn't really train at a big camp. He kind of trains on his own with a few group of boys. He's got his striking coach. He's got his grappling coach. He does his thing on his own, you know, so, um, you know, it can work for you and it can work again. I think some people want to go there to see where they're at uh, against other fighters, you know, that are already in the UFC, to see where they're at in terms of level, how they train against them, spar against them. But because whenever I went to train at Alliance in San Diego for them a few years, um, I liked it. I loved it. It was good training, tough training. But um, and I knew I was kind of there. I know you could train with Michael Chandler and Ross Pearson was kind of there in the scene at that time. It just kind of gave you a bit of confidence to see where you're at in, in terms of that level. But um it can work for you and it can work against you but the fight's a different ball game you know I realised that they're like uh, putting all the effort into the training thinking you're the, the good guy in the gym but when the fight comes you didn't really fight the, the way you should fight and uh, so that's something I kind of changed a wee bit fuck what happens in the gym whenever the fight the lights turn on that's it's time to fight that's where it counts that's, that's, it whenever, counts, it, that's it? whenever it matters so that's where I kind of took that on board recently, whereas before it was like, oh, right, I'm sparring with Michael Chandler, I'm getting the better here, I'm a stronger fighter, blah, blah, blah. But that means fuck all. Like, whenever you're, you're, you're in the fight, this is when, it, you know, that's when the eyes are on, you know, it's a different ball game then. So, uh, as James says, it doesn't really matter. It's good to kind of see where you're at in terms of level, gauge yourself, spar with some boys, but um, it's not the be all and end all. Like, I'm sure you'll know too, James, that I, uh, like, Stevie being out and where was it at? He went to TriStar for a bit. TriStar and he was there for a few bit and then he came back. So and yeah. he's, he's done even better since he's you know since he's been back with you guys too. So yeah. I think it's just it's the, go ahead. 
it's the time you, you're going to get with Rodney that makes a difference. Do you know what I mean? You've got a, you've got a coach, you're getting one to one time. Like yeah. it, it's, it makes so much difference having that hands on coach. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I found with Stevie anyway. I know, true, mate. I, I like working with Rodney one to ones <laughs> whenever he gets me in the gym. <laughs> 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 whenever I get to the gym, but no, no, it's time, but it's time to switch on now. You know, whenever you get the belt, you've got to try to fight, can't you? Just head the belt and then just ah fuck it I'm going to fuck about and not train half hours training it's because it, it'll catch up with you in the fight it, without a doubt yeah. it'll catch up with you so it's uh, and I'm here training with his former coaches and it's, it's some of his team uh, the friends basically not close friends that are training in this gym too so it's a wee bit it's a wee bit sticky situation I'm not 100% comfortable with and it's not to say that it's trying to affect my mind and it's just uh, I just didn't like that feel you know I'd rather, yeah. I don't mind like being here for one month, then go, go back with, with Rodney and a few lads back in the gym and then just work together, just three or four of us and just work together, work the pads and, uh, you know, just get nice and sharp because Rodney is good on the pads. I like working on the pads with Rodney because he switches stances like Gamrot. He likes to switch stances to Southpaw Orthodox and shoot for the single leg. So we're just going to work that in the last few weeks of the fight, you know, and just be sharp. That's it. I guess, I guess there's a there's, there's a level of comfort and, and confidence here you've got in Rodney as well as your coach. How, how long have you? I'll come to you with us, Rodney. How long have uh, you and Norman been working together now? Oh, me, that'll be, that'll be eleven years now, man. I think the first. You think I, 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 we, it was after I think it was never I did the fight against Tom McGuire from SBG in Dublin. I think that was the first time you cornered me uh, uh, in Dublin cage contender. Remember that uh-huh. one? I think that was the first time I fought under you because before that I was remember you were training at David Patterson's too, and I had always chatted you then. And then I thought here, um, you're in Balamina, Rodney. It would be handy for me just to go to your gym aye, instead I of going there anyway. Aye, so that's it was. I I would say we knew each other way before that, but uh, the first year 2009, because Ethan's ten now and you were there, but he, a while before Ethan was born, so. Uh, it's only good 11, 12 years, man. Aye, uh, uh, 12 years, I would say. Uh, I'm saying flies, boys. No, it uh, uh, flies. 12, 12, 12 years, uh, I fucking had a lot of good old times too. Fucking uh, missing a lot, almost missing a lot of flights and what the hell's getting to uh-huh. fucking. That's madness. Oh. Crazy. Write a book. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to ask where we've got both his own rod. Eh? What's, uh, what's the biggest challenge coaching Norman? Get him in the gym consistently. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> get him in the gym? <laughs> uh, 100%. 100%. That's, he's right. He's right. 100%. Yeah. But you know, like when you're like in the UFC twice a day, every day, six days a week, you know, but when that kind of, not a novelty, but you've kind of been at that level and then it's just getting back up there, but it's kind of that routine that's trying to get it back. It was hard, I. Yeah, they, yeah, it was hard, but it's transport and traveling and you say, just do you know, there's a lot of other complications there too. It's not as straightforward as just walking around the corner and jumping in the gym. It was after it was after the UFC. Remember, I had the fight with Andrew Fisher. You know, I took the fight on ACT uh, in Scotland against Andrew Fisher. And I thought, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'll just be too strong for Andrew, no problem. Uh, just uh, too much experience, and then. I think I had one sparring session up in the gym. Mm. I was saying it was. Uh, you're in, I was your first three fights, man. I were you were in the gym like five times, seven times, and five times for that was for three different fights. I know, I not <laughs> good. fights, and I was like, "Fuck, man, not you're doing good. that, and you're not even training." And then boys are training their balls off to kind of kind of compete against you. So it was the mindset, you know, when you get into the fight. Instead of when I was new, I see you worry too much, thinking, "Oh, I need to win this. I need to win. I need to win." Because there's a lot of pressure. Like, there's a lot of pressure, you know, and it's like, "Oh, I need to win in a, some sort of exciting way that it's going to, you know, kind of attract the fans." But then at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, you need to, if you if you lose, you you lose a lot of money too, you know. Uh, it's half and half, you you know, you'll know, James too. It's like uh, your money is half and half each time. Yeah, it's brutal. And, and it's like a, it's like just a cutthroat business so there's a, definitely a lot of pressure there you know but in saying that you know I kind of took a lot of experience for that and now it's just like if I can still keep the training up like that there it's the way I'm doing now training the exact same but in, in my mind just fuck it let's go it's time to fight I don't give a fuck here that's the best attitude I think having get into the fight and, and do you think it makes a big difference for you as well Norman obviously you said you've, you've re-signed with KSW and you're happy with everything there does that make make a big difference for you when you're happy with the situation you've got with the promotion? Yeah, bye. <laughs> they'll not hear me grinning too much then about <laughs> playing blah 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 this and that, and they're like, "Oh, we need you to uh, be the old normal, promote the fight, and this and that." And I was like, 
I'll be your whore if you want, Mr. Lewandowski, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, KSW is good promotion. Like, the, the first fight we had was uh, the 2017 at that big stadium show, and that was, fuck, unbelievable. Rodney, I tell you. Unreal, man, fuck. Uh, I actually had a, an uncle who, you know, he's never been to MMA ever in his life, and he... <laughs> He's got, he works in a business, a big business, and he's brought a couple of friends with him. Last minute, says, I'm coming across, Norman, could you get me them tickets? So he came across last minute, and I told Rodney about it, and these people never, ever, didn't even know where they're going to, you know? They never, ever heard of, they, they heard of MMA, and their your boy mentioned Conor McGregor, all right, we know now. And uh, so they came to this show, and it was the second biggest show ever they came to, and they couldn't believe it when they were there, 57,000 people, and... Um, Man, the production that KSW put on is unbelievable. It's, there was like a rock concert before it. <laughs> I thought it was un- but unbelievable. The lights, the whole production is out of this world. Like I don't, uh, I don't think people back, but well, certainly not in Scotland, don't appreciate how big it is. We've got a bunch of Polish guys who train here, um, and they, they don't talk about UFC. They talk about KSW. Um, and a bunch of them are excited because we're speaking to you the night. They're like, like, put that thing up saying this week on the podcast, and they're all messaging me like, "Fucking hell, Norman Park on the podcast." <laughs> the Polish guys, aye. They're loyal. It, yeah, that's the one thing. They're yeah. loyal on that. Yeah. I, I think they. Appre- I think they. Appre- sorry, sorry, James. I think they appreciate you know just somebody because they you know KSW it was all Polish champions, and then they've been known for a wee bit of this and that the promotion you know, but then. After a while, you can see it's becoming more European standards going worldwide now because um, there's champ. You got Scott Askins, the middleweight champ. You got Phil De Vries as the heavyweight champion. You know, there's very little Polish champions now, so they're showing that they're going in the right way. And uh, yeah. I think uh, the Polish people appreciate, you know, the foreign fighter coming across and you know, putting up a good fight, and fighting till the end. And I think it was a fight after Boris. Remember on the Boris Mankowski? Uh, I think it was the fight after that. I took the fight and like. I didn't even know how I did it, to be honest. Took the fight and shot. It was three weeks, man, out. Fucking doing all sorts of shit and stupid shit, to be honest. <laughs> Aye, so I took the fight and uh, I says to Rodney, I says, right, there's only two ways he's going to fight. He hasn't fought in a long time. He was away to Thailand preparing. So he's either going to come out aggressive and hard and try to knock me out, you know, or else he's going to come out and maybe just stand and try and technically fight me. So I'm going to figure out if he comes out aggressive, but... A wee lad has sent me a message to say, Norman, he says he's going to try and knock you out in the first round. So I says, right, fuck, right, just try and survive, stay in here. And I thought he hit me some good shots, you know, but he never really hurt me when in shots, but he hit me some good heavy shots. And uh, um, I remember Rodney saying, right, this is it, round two, man, this is your game now. Start, you've put the pressure on a wee bit. And I could hear Rodney saying, he's breathing heavy, he's blowing, look at him. And I could see him blowing, but my conditioning wasn't really where I wanted it to be too. Because <laughs> <laughs> once I get the fight, you know, I know it's like, right, I'm waiting for sprints here <laughs> for about two weeks, you know, three weeks I think we had. So I, I kind of got to uh, to a certain level of fitness and kind of just using the experience too. And just, he blew him slow basically, but I think if it had fought me smart, he could have won the fight. But I think it was just that he had a lot of pressure on him too. And I think he had the wrong tactics for that fight. But after that fight there, I definitely got a lot. My social media and stuff like that blew a lot more because because of the fight. It was a good fight. You know, he was beating me up. I come back, you know, and end up winning the fight. But I thought they were going to give the fight to him, actually. Uh, in all honesty, I thought they were going to give the fight to him because it was so close. And I remember jumping up and saying, look at him. I said, didn't he fuck me up here again? Didn't he? I won this fight. <laughs> and I think, you know, that maybe, you know, uh, uh, kind of helped the judges with me standing up and him lying on the ground. He was just basically, he was gone then by that stage. Stormin! Norman! And, uh, and, and, and that's it, you know, and I got a huge following since since that fight, you know, and uh, the police people appreciate me a, a lot, so they do, so I, I like that too. Yeah, and I, I would imagine it's good for the promotion as well, KSW, if they've got other European fighters and fighters from other countries that are holding belts, because potentially it opens up the market a bit for them and brings more fans in from outside Poland as well. Yeah, for sure, I think... Uh, I think they only got one maybe. Well, Gamrot's got the he's got the belt at the minute, but he hasn't fought in two years, so he basically should be stripped of that belt. So mm. I get the real belt. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave my build at home and we'll just go and collect the other build to bring it back. <laughs> because I forgot to bring the build here anyway. <laughs> it's, it's quite weird that it's been, been two years out and, and he's <clears throat> he still has the, the belt. At, that's it. Normally, we, well, obviously, UFC throws interim belts everywhere at the minute, but uh, normally promotions will give you about a year or so. Uh, so I, I, true, true. I think it was because um, he did after the fight with me. He fought. He defended at one time, maybe like mm. a few months after then. He dropped the featherweight. You know, he, he cut away down the featherweight. He cut like what I would do for lightweight at the time. He was cutting six or seven kilos water weight, and he says he didn't like that there. But he won the fight against the guy. I knew he would win it. His wrestling and his uh, jiu-jitsu and he's uh, was better than your guy's jiu-jitsu. He just took him to the ground, you know, and controlled the fight. So. Once he got that belt, then he was the two champion, and uh, and then I was coming back on the scene again. I came back with the Boris fight, and then after the Boris fight, then I fought Savinsky, and then I, I knew on the sideline he was looking, waiting to see if I was going to slip up, you know, and, and you know lose a fight or something. Because I I didn't think he wanted to fight, to be honest. He was offered to fight me in London, but he said no. Nah. But I think it was more maybe complications where he wanted more money or something. That's what I think, but. Um, or unless he just didn't want to fight, but now he's been away and he's he's uh he's been offered to fight me, and then the fight was set up. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on him coming into this fight too. He's got a lot to show, and then I'm just going to go out. Well, just let's go over it's time to finish off round two in KSW40. <laughs> that's where it's at. that's where we're at, Rodney. Round two, KSW40. Finish out, finish out. this one. Let's go for five <laughs> rounds and just finish it. <laughs> Rodney, you were saying about KSW you there when you when um, when Norman first uh, signed and started fighting for KSW, were you blown away by how big the show actually was? Yeah, especially uh, it's their production and their attention to detail. Like they're so hands on. You're not a number, and like the guys that run it are backstage. They're you know they're running about with everybody, and they get the bus to and from the venues with you. But that's how they look after the fighters. You know, food, the supplements. You know, IVs, man, they put a room up for you to get IVs and stuff, like and medicals and all, and then the whole production out of the show, it's just down to the second. Now, it's one of the, I always sat back and watch shows in the background and how all the things are done and compare different shows, and by far there's that, and there's one show we were at in China, and that's the best production and best running out fit I've ever, I've ever came across. And it's mostly ran by women, KSW backstage. All the bar jobs <laughs> are all women. And they don't take no shit from nobody. <laughs> no, They're on no rail, man. It's crazy. Crazy. What was the show in China? Was it one? No, it was that. It was from his Wing Chun Men or something. It was some random <laughs> one. Oh, talk about a... Uh, Wing Chun Men. C-H-E-U-N-G, man. Why do you pronounce that? I don't know, but... I'm going to Google that shit. I was like... I was like... Very short notice as well, because like, I, I virtually left it the visas on the Monday morning in Dublin that we were flying out. I got, I got the visa at 9 o'clock, and we were bounced on the plane at friggin' 12 and oh stayed over for a week and then they wanted to keep us on for another week to fight K1 the following week <laughs> oh man they're fucking loops but it was nice to go to China and see it but the show your boy says I'll have to apologise this is a pretty small show we're kind of coming more inland to China there'll only be about 9,000 people at it and I went fuck what's your normal show ah, 20, 22,000 normally at the normal show so well, that was one we are known. Lisa went over and fought on. That's right. Uh, you like the food they made, didn't you? Ah, I'm disgusting. <laughs> Legs and fucking heads floating about in soup. Uh, all, I, all I wanted was playing chicken and green vegetables and rice. <laughs> I couldn't uh, get it over. I love when we go somewhere like or, or somewhere of a restaurant or something. This is right. Rodney's going to order here. What's he going to get? Can I just get a, a bit of chicken, please? And <laughs> just a plain rice. On a plate, that's it. And they're saucing it, and they're looking at me with two heads. Oh, do you want this? Or just uh, rice and a bit of chicken. I'm so fussy, mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate laugh every time. <laughs> uh, China's uh, know the spot as well. I've uh, you see some of the videos online, and they eat some fucking insane stuff. Man. Uh, here, man, we walk like a shopping centre. You get into a shopping centre, and there's an escalator, and there's a guy outside with a big machete. 
just cutting chickens in half and whatever, other cats and whatever was there, just <laughs> hanging them up inside the place. There was no air conditioning, no ice boxes or nothing. Lying on the floors. <laughs> nah, they, they, they didn't Don't start to get elbows, Liam. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy, crazy. But it was good, it was good. Uh, and obviously, uh, just to come back to your audience, we'll just talk a wee bit about the gym. Um, obviously, you've got Norman, you've got Reese, who's doing fantastic now, uh, obviously signed with Cage Warriors. In terms of the other guys in the fight team in the gym, who, who have you got coming through at the gym at the moment that you're quite excited about? You've kind of, there's a, well, there's a lot of young young ones, like we Bradley, the wee guy Bradley Rice. The wee guy's only 15 or 16, man. He's like a mini version of Reese. Uh, yeah, I was we Dylan Douglas, Mark Andrews, a lot of wee guys still under the radar. They just haven't really broke onto the big scene yet. But uh, and there's a few wee guys just kind of they're a 15, 16 year old now. They're only getting to compete, but in Northern Ireland they can't really compete to the 18, you see. So they're kind of mm. low the radar. But uh, the wee Bradley will be one day watch. You know him, Norm. We kick. Ah, uh, good wee lad. He's kind of the oh, last time I sparred with him, it was, I seen the difference in his. Uh, just the difference in him straight away. He's kind of filled out a bit, and he uh, yeah, he was coming pressure in you and uh, smart wee fighter like, and he switches it up and all too like. So there's a I couple see. of wee guys. They're all that kind of MMA breed, you know. A lot of them are starting off with just pure MMA, no other background, you know. But you had Reese coming through like them stages. Never like they were like fourteen, fifteen, uh, just like a wee stick, you know, uh, <laughs> and then. Reese was the, I thought Mark Andrew would have been the one that would have kind of pushed more, but he kind of maybe met a woman and settled down, chilled inside Aye. a wee bit, you know. But uh, and then Reese just came out. Uh, Reese just came out of nowhere, and he's a strength beast. Strength so like, uh, he's the uh, he's the one who's um, he's the, he's the one who's uh, number one in the country. I think he's the next one ready for the UFC, in my opinion. Aye. He, seems to, he seems to have found a home at, at one seventy as well. Um, that that seems that seems to suit Reese. We bit gutted that the situation that happened. We obviously Ross uh, Ross Houston leaving Cage Warriors. I would have I'd have really. Loved I like to see that, that fight. Like I'd have loved to have seen that fight. I don't think we'll see that now. We obviously Ross over in Bellator, and I think he's a right. Reese is probably probably closing in in the UFC. But that was a wee bit a uh, wee bit of shame we missed out in that one. Aye aye. And, uh, uh, who who was it? Ross Houston fought against uh, Nicholas Dalby. Was it? Oh, that yeah. was insanity. That was, that was like a fucking bloodbath. I heard it was. I heard it was. I missed the fight, you know, but um, I heard it, it just seemed blood everywhere, you know, and just heard it was a good war. And, Aye. But back and forward, Ross kind of opened Dalby up early and then Dalby came back at Ross, but the guys literally couldn't stand there was that much blood. Uh, yeah. stop. That's what I don't like about the Cage Warriors uh, canvas, you know, it's a wee bit... It's while slippy, you know, in there, it was like a bit of water, a bit of blood. Um, it's crazy, Aye. but... Because I think, you know, when Reese fought the want to fight against the... Uh, what's the guy, Rodney, from uh, Andrew Fisher's gym? Aye, uh, Perry. Good that fight there, oh, aye. Like, they, were sli- they were on their knees and they were up and they were slipping all over the show. It was like an ice strike. I thought, fuck, man. Aye, the wee ring round. Was there like a cattle grab? The wee ring round. Uh, <laughs> now you say there's like two foot of the ring with just a wee blood trail. We trot all the way round it. Because uh, Reese got, Ras- got that choke on and then he slipped and they kind of fell again. They couldn't get his hands out from aye. the release. It. There was, uh, the blood and that was shocking too. What a fight that was, though. What a fight that was. Ah, some fight, aye. It was, and then obviously Reese, Reese went up and Perry's went, Perry's went down. Hi, aye, I noticed that there, but I think it was Reese. Like, there was one time when we went the, uh, where was when we went to Newcastle or Reese was fighting? Remember, he had to cut a well lot of water. Remember, it was like six or seven kilo we had to cut. Uh, I think it was maybe. Was that a Bama Bellator show? It was, aye, it was not. I aye. think it was just a Bama, just a Bama on its own. Birmingham show. was that not? Was it Birmingham? Must have been, I think it was Birmingham, aye. Right, aye. So uh, I th- remember the people uh, recorded it, and uh, it was ITV or the guys from Dublin recorded the weight cutting stuff. Your boy, uh, what's ah. his name? What do you call your guy from Severe MMA? Ah, oh. McGrath. What do you call that guy, McGrath? Nile. Nile did the, remember Nile did the wee uh, recording thing, a uh, race cutting the weight aye, stuff. Aye. It was that time there he cut the weight and I think it was after that he realised, nah, he didn't, he didn't like it. But even though he won the fight, he didn't, he didn't like cutting that much weight and he just felt I know, it was brutal. And he was starting to fill out more and got that kind of man he's, kind of strength kind of kicking out because he's only 23, 24 at the minute. Like, right. so. He's a big lad. He's, have you noticed a big difference in him? Uh, see, we, see, knowing he doesn't have to cut that weight anymore, have you noticed a big difference just in the general? Uh, 
strength. Oh, definitely. It's like, it's like it's really a weight lifted off from shoulders because you can concentrate in the fight now. It's basically, I don't, because a lot of the fight is worrying about your weight cut. Mm. So the way, you see the way 1FC do it, like if everybody's a, everybody's a 155, you, f- you move up a weight division and fight at 170, which makes a hell of a lot more sense. That's the weight cut to pay in the fucking arse, man. Even for coaches too, I don't know about you, James, but you just sit in the sauna and friggin' do the hot bass and wrap them up. And- uh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I get <laughs> fl- flashbacks to when I used Half to do that. I'm scarred. Um, like, your woman wants to go to a sauna or a spa, they chill out. I get, fucking, <laughs> I get PTSD from it. Yeah. <laughs> we've, put, uh, we've put a sauna in this gym about a year ago and I, I think I've been on it once. Kyle, <laughs> look at it. That's Kyle, look at it, man. No, I hear them on the fucking seconds, me too. Between doing it myself and then the amount of hours you've sat in with fighters as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fight, oh, fight, week, fight week, we go somewhere with Rodney, and Rodney will not even touch anything. The chap will literally starve him, so he'll say, Well, I see, Rodney, you know, it yet? No, no, man, man, I'll just wait till you're ready, you know. You're ready. I'm like, Fuck that, man. Don't you worry about uh, eating. Uh, no, you have to. Eat. Because I know yeah, Davey, I know Davey Patterson, all them boys just to dare, you know, with his fighters just to eat big chocolate cakes in front of the fighters <laughs> yeah. and stuff, just to kind of annoy them. But it didn't really bother me. The only thing that really bothered me was like, say when you do the first cut of the water weight the night before, like maybe what, seven or eight pound, and then you try to sleep. I can never sleep the night before the way and It's like, I think yeah. it's a mental thing too. You know, I think it's more a mental thing because... I could just lie in that room and just literally look at the ceiling for eight hours, just hoping the next day I'll come so I can cut the rest of the water and then just weigh in. But um, no, Rodney would just go the whole time without eating a thing. Yeah, and it's, uh, and I turn on drink or eat in front of you. It's not fair you're starving. I'm sitting there like Lord of the <laughs> no, <water. laughs> I'm not really hungry. It's more the thirst thing the night before the weigh in. You know, that's 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 where it kind of gets me. But up until that, I'm not really, I think just kind of excited that it's coming to the way and you're getting ready for the fight. I'm not really wor- too worried about eating or anything like that there. It's, it's uh, <laughs> whenever I cut that weight the night before the way and I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to, Rodney making up the drinks and I'm like, I'm going to take a sip of that. <laughs> I didn't even touch that. I didn't even touch that. <laughs> Is there a better oh, feeling when you've had that weight cut, you've made the weight and you get that first drink of ice cold water or whatever it is you're drinking first? Oh, Brian, I nearly down it. I know you're not meant to do it, like, but I'll take a couple of digestive enzymes and I'll take, I think I'll take at least maybe 500 ml. I'll take half a litre for <laughs> sure. I, and, uh, and then I'll just let that run through my body. But um, no, nowadays, New Year's Eve, you got to do it all orally. You know, you, you, there's no IVs on the gut there and stuff. But um, oh. everybody's on the let's same level playing field. But in KSW, you can take IVs and stuff like that there, whatever you want, which every man to their cell, whichever you know think works best for you. What do you think about it, James? I I done the IVs a couple of times. Uh, I always I actually preferred it to be honest. Um, uh. Could just sit and, and chill with it. Um, I don't know why they, I don't know why you said a band that I can see the Well I never knew I never knew that the, it was actually the reason why they banned it was because it was a masking for like a performance. You must you must steroids where can't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I never uh, knew that the there. So plasticides and the and the bottles. Was there then the Russians brought and they put it in glass bottles and what they do yeah. the plasticides in the bags. So there's uh, something yeah. to do with masks and steroids and stuff, but I don't see why it's medical. I don't see why they can't do what KSW does and, and have a room with IVs and doctors giving them after I mean, proper doctors not like I yeah. uh, yeah. that. That, that's what's insane about it because obviously the USC spend a fortune in y- USADA. You just wonder why USADA couldn't be in a room where the, the IVs are done by a, a, a separate company. I mean, they, they would have uh, the money for it. And surely, ultimately, when you're you're fully you're, you're rehydrated as much as you can be and you're feeling as good as you can after a weight cut, you're going to get a bre- better product in the cage. True, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But kind of rehydrates the brain quicker too. And uh, because that's the last part of the brain, or, you know, the body to get hydrated is the brain. And uh, a few fights, there's been a few fights I've been on and you've been hit a good stiff jab and you you feel inside your head shivering a bit. But you, if you're looking at the fight, me for the outside, you didn't really see anything happening with the legs or anything, but inside you can feel the head knocking about. But it's, um, I see me cutting, remember the time in Australia, Rodney? Oh, bro, almost. We, we, we had, the, one of the American boys gave us the skills, but they were weighing, way under weights they were, but we thought that they were over the weight. And, uh, fuck me, I was, uh, Jesus Christ, I think I cut eight kilo of water in 24 hours. Unbelievable. Almost passed out and everything. Then I stepped on uh. the fish, official scales out the back whenever I was went in with, uh, for Colin Fletcher. I stepped on the official scales, uh, 153 pound I was. <laughs> I went, fuck, 
Robbie, give me that drink there. No, 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 no. no. I said, give me it. I <laughs> so I'm nearly dying. Terrible, man. That was just on death's door. Like, and, and then the time, remember, I missed the weight for the Gamrot fight. I missed it by 400 grams, but that was tough. That's whenever I, was, I actually quit. I says, no, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. My back was starting to fucking pulse and make like, weird out fucking like, my liver or something. I felt like it was twisting or something. And then I just says, no, nah, stop. I gave him 30% of my purse so he can take it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's insanity when a- anybody that's maybe no, maybe a casual fan of the sport or when they hear stories like that, they're like, well, thinking, why the fuck do you do that? Why do you do that to yourself? But and that's what most people think. You know, they just think, uh, what's the point in it? And uh, true, like, what is the point? Why can you not, like, I can see if you're adding another weight category in there, then they're going to just... Uh, it's a new belt, it's a new division, like, you know, a 73 kilogram belt in there or something, but you can take away from that and go like one, what is it, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, blah, blah, blah. You could do it that way, but um, people will always just want to be that wee bit bigger too in the fight. But, uh, Aye, that, not- that, that, that's the thing. I think if you add in new weight classes, you're going to see people for the weight classes above trying to say, well, maybe I can make 165, whereas I would have no chance of making 155. Um, right. I think the only thing as well, we're seeing a lot of guys now who are uh, who, who are not cutting weight anymore, who've moved up in weight. There's examples of it everywhere, and they are having success. Uh, so I think that's the only thing. But I don't think weight cutting's ever going to go in our sport. I don't, I don't, I don't see it anyway. No, true. But as you say, there, I mean, there's a few boys that's moved up from lightweight to welterweight, and but Gilbert Burns, for instance, there in lightweight, it was. Wins, but there's a couple of losses he has now. He's ready to fight for the title against uh, Usman here, so and he's moved up, man. He's looked real good, so um, aye, it's, it's every whatever way he feels best for you. You know, some people like yeah. the mind, some people like the mindset of cutting all the weight, you know, and all the water weight and stuff because it gets them kind of a bit more mentally prepared. But health wise, it's not really good for your brain. And I'm getting an old cunt high, I'm not going to keep this up much longer. <laughs> <laughs> so do, you, do, you think that, do you think there'll come a point, Norman, when you decide, right, 155, that's, we're, we're going to have to move up? Um, I think at the moment, I can make, I can make the weight, I can make the weight, no problem, I, but um, I think the KSW only really want me to move up right now because they got the Soldich, the champion, he's a foreign champion for a different country. Uh, they didn't want anybody else sucking up there to try and get that built. And uh, they want to kind of keep uh, foreign champions uh, at different weight, you know, weight categories, especially yeah. fighting for the title or if you're the champion. So, uh, but I think maybe after a wee while, you're never going to keep winning. You're going to, something's going to happen at some stage, but maybe some stage I'm going to get a good run of beating and then I'm going to like, oh, I'm not going to cut weight anymore, moving up into welterweight, fuck this. <laughs> maybe uh, that'll happen at some stage because it'll come sooner or later, but um, I'll be waiting for it to come, so... Yeah, I think I think I think I think maybe maybe near the end I'll possibly go there, but I'm not too sure. I didn't kind of think too far ahead to be honest. Just living the moment like an old dog. <laughs> just take just uh, take it one fight at a time then. Uh, that's right. Aye. Hey uh, James, I'll, I'll let James, I'll let you come across and get a couple of spars because I remember uh, what was it? I remember you were telling me Rodney that uh, Ray Stevie Ray was looking me to help him spar for the uh, his Johnson last fight. Aye. What was it after the fight, Rodney? I damaged my fucking leg or something or my hand. Is your knee again? I think it was your knee again. One in my hand. You just fought because I was like, watching your fight. Um, I, I was watching your fight and I was like... The police zombie, was it? Yeah. Aye, my leg was like a balloon, man. I kicked my calf all night and it was just like a balloon. And I'm telling you, it was... I'd have been no used to Steve, but I'd just been a punching bag, you know? Yeah. Um, but he went and got the job done anyway. A good, tough fight it was, man. Brilliant fight, back and forth. And get the job done. Yeah, those yeah. southpaw things, something like I didn't really like fighting against the southpaws too. But when you get to a certain level, you've got to be prepared for everything too. Ah, uh, you're going to get them, man. Aye, uh, but I'll need to come across someday and get a couple of good old spars on with Stevie and a couple of others. I know you get a good bunch of boys over there too. Aye, any time, man. It'll be really cool. Aye, mate. James, I saw as well you put something up. You'd get the COVID certific- certification or some uh, something to do with the safety. What, what was that about? Oh, it's a load of shite, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, looks important anyway. It, it looks good. It's it looks a, good. An open it's university thing. Um, I think it's Australian. You do like a thirty-minute thing where you just read these slides and gives you some information, and then you do a quiz at the end, like uh, thirty multiple choice questions, and basic common sense stuff. Um, 
and then it gets, sends you the wee certificate. So I was like, I look pretty good on the gym, social media stuff. But uh-huh. I don't think it means anything, man. And the, and the stuff that was on the actual quiz, about three hours later, there was st- stuff on the news that was opposite. So the stuff on the <laughs> quiz about stuff on the quiz about how it's trans, how it's getting transmitted through surfaces and stuff. And then in the news at six o'clock, it's saying. It doesn't live on surfaces. You can't catch it off the surfaces. You're just like, this is a fucking shambles. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> so, see when they say you can't. Obviously, they're saying it's only airborne now. But it's only if you've got symptoms you can you can pass it. If you're asymptomatic, you can't get it. So, if it doesn't live on surfaces, does does I mean is a human board? Does a human body count as a surface that it wouldn't live on? I'm more thinking for like grappling and stuff like that. Uh, you still catch it through droplets. I think sweat and in your breath. Um, right. For what I'd done the day when I was doing my certificate. <laughs> well, I'll take your word for it, you're certified, we're not. <laughs> you're certified coach now. Right. <laughs> uh, so, oh. Oh, it's mad, this one. It's, uh, you don't know what to believe, like I say. It's, uh, they put me their information out today, so it's everything's changing. The world's went to fucking hell in a handbasket the last wee while, so we just need a meteor to come now, and that'll, that'll just finish 2020 off. I'll just yeah. find so probably. Aye, <laughs> aye, that's it. Well, listen, um, we won't keep you too much longer. Obviously, we appreciate you coming on. Um, just before we we finish up, James, anything you want to jump in with? Uh, maybe just uh, Norman, if you can come back on after you after you win this fight, man, that'd be pretty cool. I uh, with me, aye, I would definitely come across. No problem, whatever way the fight goes. Well, all being well, I get the job done. But yeah, I'll be on which way, no problem, but uh. <clears throat> just give me a buzz man no problem perfect man so hopefully you'll have the next time we speak you'll have the belt you'll know for the belt oh yeah we're going into round two at KSW40 I'm fucking this in my head <laughs> I got this wee chip on my shoulder I'm telling you I want to fucking get this fucker <laughs> I want to get this right. fucker one way or another one way or another one way or another we got the perfect game plan to beat and we know which way he needs to be beat pressure and good defence and just 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 fight, like just a good old blood fight. That's what I'm looking uh-huh. for. You know, you know it'd be nice and technical, stand on the outside, try and pick a part and play this game. Just get straight in his face and just fight hard. And and whoever gives up, gives up, you know. See if they say no social distancing then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way, man. Definitely no way. <laughs> um, and obviously, everybody can check that fight out. That fight's on uh, the 11th of July. And I believe that'll be available through a live stream. Uh, people can purchase that uh, through KSW, is that right? KSW TV, yeah, you get it through that's Android, what is it, iOS. Um, I, I think the first time a couple of my mates have got it through their phone, the first time it never really worked through the phone. Or they, have these, they tried to stream it to the TV, it never worked, but it worked through the phone. But I think you can stream it to the TV now. And uh, and it's pretty cheap now. It's a cheaper price. I think it's like £6 or something like that there, €6 Euro or whatever, so... So, if anybody wants a wee tip, the way I've done it for KSW is I put in, use my laptop with an HDMI cable right in the telly and boom, you're golden. Yeah, you're sorted, you're sorted, 100%. Uh, well then, listen again, lads, thanks very much for coming on the show and for everybody tuning in. Um, we always appreciate it and as always, pop on to the Higher Level YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button and notification button, uh, button and keep up with the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.